This is absolutely outrageous attack on Joe Biden. There's no evidence whatsoever that he's done anything wrong. No evidence of wrongdoing tied to his son Hunter Biden's Ukraine business has actually been found. He had no evidence of wrongdoing by either Biden. But again, there is just no evidence at this point in time that Joe or Hunter Biden did anything inappropriate here. Not one single fact ever right. uncovered by anyone that he did anything unethical. Now it's Hunter Biden. There's always a diversion. They are always looking for a shiny object to divert attention. Really, the magic words now for Republicans are Hunter Biden. Like that is the get out of jail free card. The Trump Republicans are so bad. So the press has to compensate by playing up Biden and Hillary scandals. There are no scandals from the Biden White House about anything. We should be clear, there's never been any evidence of a link between President Biden and any wrongdoing that Hunter Biden may have been, may have committed. It's, it's called the big lie. There's no evidence. There is zero evidence, as Biden said today. President Biden said he has not received any money from business with his family. Yeah. There is no evidence to date Joe Biden has received large sums of money. Biden is chump change compared to what the Trump kids took in during the Trump presidency. When you're talking about the investigation around Joe Biden in particular, at this point, there isn't enough information to suggest that there's a whole lot more digging to take place. First of all, my son's done nothing wrong. I trust him. I have faith in him. And it impacts my presidency by making me feel proud of him. Because it's a two-year revenge tour to make up for how they believe Donald Trump was treated. So they'll investigate everything and anything related to Biden, even if there's no evidence there and there are no facts there. It has been nearly four years. So what exactly happened to law in America? What happened to consequences to the idea that you pay for your crime, that crime doesn't pay? Our nation today is in the throes of a new era, one we have never experienced before, and one that could destroy us, our republic, our constitution, and democracy forever if we do not take a stand today. Politicians for decades have escaped punishment for their crimes, using power and money and position to ensure they go scot-free. But it has never been this widespread and this obvious. And never before has that breakdown of law and order reached our streets and the everyday American in such drastic proportions as well. If you side with the elites, you're gonna be fine. You stand against them, well, we're coming on the air a bit earlier than usual because of breaking news at this hour. A grand jury here in New York City has just handed up an indictment against former President Donald Trump, making him the first former president in U.S. history to I gotta, face criminal charges. I got to tell you, I am sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of the January 6th rioters being thrown in jail without trial for some of them for two years while the Black Lives Matter rioters go free. I am sick and tired of our system that charges a veteran in New York on a subway with manslaughter for acting in self-defense and the defense of others. I am sick and tired of conservatives being banned or censored on social media, while the far left users can post death threats with absolutely no consequence. I am sick and tired of the mainstream media failing at their one and only job to hold elected officials accountable. But more than anything else, I am sick and tired of the witch hunt against one president while the blatant power abuses of another go completely ignored. Tonight, we end the four years of inaction regarding the, the Biden family's corruption. Tonight, we're going to make it so incredibly without a doubt clear that if the left can't ignore these, uh, they just won't be able to get away with ignoring them anymore. It is time for us to make a choice. Are we done yet? Because it is time for the reckoning of the Biden crime family. Hello, America. I want to tell you something right off the top. Um, there are 
hopefully people that have not watched me for a long time or not seen the show or are skeptical because they haven't really been paying that much attention. Hopefully they're with you at the home and, um, and you're watching it together. I want them to know that there are no commercials for the next, what, 90 minutes, maybe up to two hours. No commercials at all. This costs this network a fortune to do this. But we feel it's really important to do it because the only one we answer to is you. You know how PBS always says, uh, sponsored by, paid for by uh, viewers like you. No, no, because they also have the Ford Foundation and everybody else. This one is not sponsored by viewers like you, it is you. Because you are the only ones we answer to in the end. We built the blaze for that for a reason, and I'll explain a little bit more here in just a second. But tonight's show is called The Reckoning, and it is actually the first of a new series. We chose the words The Reckoning for a very specific reason. It's because the time for talk is over. Now is the time for action. Now is the time to hold those in power to account. And everybody in America says, I know, I know, but what are you going to do? Because we are holding the powerful accountable this evening, we also have to be realistic about the odds and the risks. I think we have come up with something that if we all work together on, it will work, but we're also poking a global bear right in the eye. My intent is to give you a constitutional stick that we can all use to stick in the eyes of justice so she is blind again. If Donald Trump did something wrong, I would have wanted him to be impeached, removed from office, and maybe go to jail. If Biden does something wrong, I'd want him impeached, and go to jail if he did anything illegal. I want it the same on both sides. But nobody seems to believe that anymore. But I think you do. I, it's not my way or the highway. This is a country of laws. We are a nation of laws and not of men. But that has been flipped on us. Now we are a nation of men. If you're the right man, you're fine. You're the wrong man, they'll destroy you. And those right men are now involved with the right men at YouTube or Facebook or anybody else that could shut our live stream down. We can't be naive going into these things. This is going to be a tough battle. For us, big tech we know is in bed with big government. None of these people are going to like what I have to say tonight. So, so be it. So be it. I had an idea for a network where I and others could go. And I told you at the time, I wanted it to be kind of the Alamo. That we could lose everything. We could lose our sponsors. We could lose everything. But we would only answer to you. Blaze TV is the only place where you'll be able to watch this special. That's why I founded this company. So you can always tell the truth free from any kind of censorship. We never tell a host what to do, ever. I'd like you to be part of the family if you haven't already done so. Go to blazetv.com slash reckoning to subscribe. Do it now. Don't miss a moment of this program and others to follow. There's a lot we're going to cover, and I know you're going to have questions, especially on the topics that big tech tries to silence. I'll be answering some of these or try to at the end exclusively on Blaze TV where big tech can't interfere. Make sure that you send in your questions during the program. Okay, now I want to start with four words that have become far too common. But every single American should be sent into uproar and disgust. Too big to fail. Do not accept these words any longer. 
when big banks are bailed out while the small and regional banks are allowed to collapse or they collapse and they collapse into the big bank, which makes it even bigger, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. People have to pay for their mistakes. All of this is uprooting the trees as, as autumn and winter comes and think we can bring them into the greenhouse. No, that'll kill all of the trees. What we're talking about is killing the republic because we are not abiding by common sense or the rule of law. I'm a little pissed off when people like Hillary Clinton sit in front of Congress and say, what difference does it make after four Americans died in Benghazi? No one has ever accepted responsibility. No one has paid a price for what happened in Libya. Did Hillary Clinton face any punishment at all after it was revealed that people whitewashed emails before investigators could examine them? She had them wipe servers and destroy servers. Destroy them. And that's okay? The question we should be asking is, how does all of this continue to get swept under the rug? I knew it was a problem, but no matter what the media says, the Durham report is very clear, very clear. There has to be a cultural change of the heart and the mind of those who are servants in Washington because they are no longer, they no longer hold any fidelity to the Constitution. That's in the Durham report. Did you know that? There is a political war raging in our country right now, and it has been going on for decades. And the Democrats have been fighting it with weapons that either the GOP is unwilling to or unable to use. While we've been busy shouting at the rain, the left, through people like George Soros, have been busy buying up district attorneys all over the country. Where are the billionaires on our side? They've been infiltrating the Department of Justice. They've been gearing up to use lawfare as a tool to protect those who are too big to fail and persecute anyone who isn't on their side. People like you and me. Here's an example of how it works. Hillary Clinton and her campaign launched one of the biggest misinformation psyops in American history, the Russia hoax. Now you would expect that after what the Durham report showed, people would get thrown into jail. Do you know what happened? After years of investigation, millions of dollars wasted, and a country torn apart, they quietly paid a small fine. Now, here's the difference in the way the left uses lawfare. Donald Trump was indicted and hauled into a courtroom for nearly the exact same charge Where's the justice in this? By the way, that charge was dismissed by people who didn't want to dismiss it. Does justice even exist in this country anymore? When Donald Trump is nailed for having documents and it's, it, you gotta have a SWAT team there, but old Joe's got those documents sitting next to his Corvette so you know they're safe. I'm sick of it. If there are some that have been deemed too big to fail and others have their homes raided and arrested and paraded into court for show trials, how can we be, be claiming still today that we have a nation of law and order? How can we possibly claim we have a Bill of Rights and a working Constitution? We're either going to lose our country or there will come a reckoning for justice in this country. And I want to be very, very, very clear. No reckoning that will do the, a, a service to the Republic would be unconstitutional or violent or play by their rules. However, there are rules that we can use that we have refused to use. Our elected officials appear to be all too willing to allow the status quo to continue. Well, is that because, Mitch McConnell, you're taking money and getting all kinds of money from your business with China and overseas shipping? Is that why? 
because I'm for you going to jail as well. Or is it just that we think, oh, it's too big. I'm just one person. It's not going to happen. And our congressmen and our senators are so old and feeble that they give up before they even try. Tonight, I'm going to give you the tools to start fighting back. And we're going to start with the Biden crime family. Now, if you're a fan of this program, you've been watching these specials over the past six years, you're more fed up than somebody who's just new on this train. We've been exposing what the Bidens have been doing in places like China and Ukraine long before there was ever a Hunter Biden laptop. How many chalkboards have I done on this? How many people have had to answer for all of it? I'll show you how they get away with it tonight. Check out a piece from Politico a week ago. Bracing for impact, Biden world preps for Hunter ba uh, Biden fallout. Are they? Are they really? Call me a skeptic, but I don't think any of them are even the slightest bit worried about any of this. For instance, take this quote. In conversations, Democrats and senior West Wing aides are downplaying the potential impact, arguing Hunter Biden was a factor in the 2020 election and voters elected his father anyway. Oh my gosh, this is a master class in gaslighting and misdirection. They're magicians. Democrats and the media want you to zoom in to this entire picture and focus on Hunter's potential tax and maybe gun violations. They want it very clear that Joe Biden was not involved and voters agree with that. OK, is that really the picture? They're zooming into what they want you to see and leaving everything else out of focus. It's what they do all the time. Let me show you a photo. Is this a Nike commercial? Or is it an incredibly incompetent president falling off his bike? Here's a really cool picture of presidential seal on Air Force One. How cool is that? Is that the picture? Or is it the commander in chief of the world's most powerful military stumbling multiple times to make it up the stairs? This is how it works. This is exactly how they want you to see the crime family that is the Bidens. This text message, unlike pop, I won't make you give me half of your salary. Wow, that seems weird. Let's zoom out to this. Zoom out further. To this, the bigger picture becomes a lot more clear and things they don't want you to see also become more clear. This email that shows profit distribution with 10 held by H for the big guy. I'm not a spy or a scientist, but I think I know who H is and the big guy. Good God, America, what's wrong with us? It starts to make a lot more sense now that we have discovered the Biden family received over $10 million from foreigners for services that we just can't figure out what they were. They've got a lot of companies out there, these Bidens, but a lot of them don't have any employees or make or sell any products. It's weird. Now, this goes a lot further than just the Bidens. The only way all of this is allowed to happen is if the government is infected with systematic rot. It is. It's systemic over all of it. FBI, DOJ, IRS, intelligence agencies, the State Department. We continue down this road where a select few are too big to fail and are protected. Kiss your security goodbye. Listen to this. The president's kids have huge hidden bank accounts in other parts of the world. They hide behind diplomatic and political immunity. They own multiple homes in expensive areas, take lavish vacations. They hang out with celebrities and billionaire tycoons. They do all of this out in the open as their father holds the highest political position in the country. And no one questions where all of this wealth and privilege comes from. Law enforcement looks the other way, either because they're scared or they're on the take themselves. Does this sound like a country you want to live in?
Oh, by the way, does this sound like this country? I mean, no, because it's not. I, I wasn't talking about Joe Biden. I, I was uh, actually referring to uh, the family of both Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela. That's the way it works there. And we are traveling on that road. And they ignored it there and everywhere else it pops up. We must not. People like you and me fight for the scraps left in the street. Food becomes a luxury item where the political elites who are all too big to fail chomp down on their empanadas right in front of our faces. If we continue on this path, this is our future. It is time that we put a stop to it. I'm going to zoom out further and give you the full picture of the Biden family and what they've been doing. And how do you think the GOP is responding to this? Well, I would say it's the same old song and dance, but at least some of them are standing up. But I am not sure. Uh, we've got a lot of people in the House that are doing things. But I am not sure that they can get this done. First of all, they don't have the Senate and they don't have control, so they can't. They, they can recommend that the Justice Department prosecute, but then what? They can try to get the Democratic Senate to impeach somebody, but it's not going to happen. But that's not reason for us to throw up our hands and say, oh, well, what can we do? I'm going to show you a lot of documents tonight, and every single document you will be able to access, it's open right now at thereckoningguide.com. Thereckoningguide.com. Download our Biden crime family dossier. Follow along and do your own homework on this. In this dossier, you will also find key information that will allow you to take action to finally hold the Bidens accountable. I'll explain a little bit more uh, a little later on in the program. I can't get over how the mainstream media, the Bidens and the rest of the Democratic Party are really trying to normalize everything. They're, first, they're hiding it, denying it happens. And then when it's finally everywhere, they're like, well, but that's no big deal. It is a big deal because you don't see this type of behavior outside of countries like Venezuela or China or Russia. It's insane. A president or vice president making political moves around the world that coincide with their families making millions in the same places. It is not normal. It is not American. I don't care how they try to spin it. That behavior cannot be normalized. Check this out. Tell me this is normal. Back in March, the House Oversight Committee produced bank records that revealed multiple Biden family members were receiving shady payments from China. Bank um, subpoenas reveal that less than two months after Biden left the White House in 2017, he did business with a Chinese company. Now, I love this. This wonderful little Chinese company wanted to do some business. It's, a, it's an energy company, State Energy HK. They, uh, they've uh, uh, wired just $3 million to Robinson Walker, LLC. Oh, no, first we have to go to the Shell Corporation. Here's, here's what the real money is coming from. It goes to this Shell Corporation, and then it goes to this guy, Rob Walker. Well, who the heck is Rob Walker? Well, uh, Walker uh, LLC is a limited uh, liability company in Delaware. At the time of the wire transfer, Rob Walker's business account had $159,000 in it. And then overnight, Three million dollars from a Chinese. What does he do? What is that LLC? The very next day, Rob, uh, Robinson Walker wired one million dollars to a company associated to a business partner of Hunter Biden named James Galar. So now he gets a third. 
again, do we know what, we know he's an attorney, so he probably can't say anything, right? He's, I don't know what he does, is he, because he's getting a third of the money. Okay, so the, the Chinese government, through a shell corporation, takes money and gives it to him. He takes a third of it, gives it here, and then the rest of it comes here. Over the next three months, Walker would send incremental payments to multiple Biden family members in their country uh, and their companies. Uh, of course, you had Hunter, and then you got James, and then you have Hallie, uh, and then you have the mysterious Biden we don't know. Now, does any of this sound legitimate at all? Because what are these people? What have they done for this energy company? You might say, well, he's an expert of energy because he was in Ukraine. Uh-huh. But what about these three? What, why did this Chinese company, first of all, use a pass-through company to disperse the funds incrementally over several months? Why was it done just a couple of months after Joe Biden left office? And if Hunter didn't share any of this money with anyone else, who's the mysterious Biden? Is this the way we do business in America? No, I'll tell you how we do business in America. It's, it's a lot different than that. You don't have a shell company. You just have a company, okay? There's nobody secretly behind the company. And then if you want to do business with that company and that company wants to do business, it pays you, okay? Very clear. You pay me, I'll do this. What this is, is these people have the money. These people hire these people to do. And then it's laundered through all kinds of other companies and banks. Now, let me take a step back for a second. This doesn't sound normal. So imagine you're a very powerful person. Let's say the vice president of the United States. Maybe you have had aspirations to run for president. But life is so expensive. You've got a bunch of kids, including one specific kid that's always seemed to be in trouble. You've also got a ton of grandkids, one you won't even recognize. Um, none of this is cheap, mind you. You've never really held down a job anywhere, okay? Because that's not what you do. You've been in public service. How do you amass a ton of money without anyone knowing it? How do you get around the oversight of, of you and your wife's financial information? Hmm, that's tough. Let me spitball for a second. So you'd have your problem child. If it was me, this is exactly what I would do. You'd have your problem child and maybe even your brother who exists outside the financial oversight do a deal in a country where you might have political influence in. Influence either today or possibly in the future. But you'd have to be careful. You'd have the main company you're dealing with use one of their subsidiaries or maybe even one of their shell companies. And the funds would go from the main company, then to the shell, then on through a pass-through. You know, somebody that you could really trust, and it would be good if they were an attorney so they could never testify against their client. And, and there's always close family business associates that help with these kind of deals. So you compensate, let's say, a third of the total take to them. And then you set up a series of payments from the pass-through lawyer to various family members. Again, people that exist outside official oversight. Now, I don't know if this is legal. I'm pretty sure it's not, but it doesn't even sound ethical. Have you ever heard of business deals working this way that were legitimate? This is exactly what the bank records revealed back in March. But maybe this is a one-off. They, they don't do this all the time. I mean, this would be very complicated. You know what I mean? You can't just, if, this just looks shady. Mm -hmm. So is it possible this one deal 
was so shady looking because the Chinese just do business differently. Sure. Okay. All right. Maybe that's possible. Sure. Don't think it is. But sure, maybe that's possible. Let's look at that. Okay. But last week, what just happened? Last week, the House Oversight Committee released even more information. <laughs> and you're not going to believe the system they put. They amassed over $10 million from foreign companies. Okay? The Biden family created a web of over 20 companies, mostly limited liability, with the majority of them created while Joe Biden was vice president. Now, these, many of these companies, in fact, I think all but three, have no employees, no product, no sales, nothing. They're just companies. So either the Bidens suddenly discovered their business genius with these companies that don't do anything right after Joe Biden became vice president, or it's something else. Hmm, what could it be? Well, the bank records that we just got revealed that not only were the Bidens receiving shady payments from China, uh, not only were they doing it in uh, Ukraine, but also now a businessman in Romania. Now, you see, this is interesting to me. Remember how Biden was focusing so heavily on corruption in Ukraine? Well, he was doing this while Hunter was being placed on the board of Burisma. Now, we know how that went. But it seems he was also doing the same thing in Romania. He traveled to Romania in May 2014 specifically to combat corruption. Watch. Corruption is a cancer, a cancer that eats away at a citizen's faith in democracy, diminishes the instinct for innovation and creativity. Already tight national budgets crowding out important national investments. It wastes the talent of entire generations, scares away investments and jobs, and most importantly, it divide, denies the people their dignity. Now, I agree with all of that, but I don't think he and his family actually do. And a lot of people in Washington, I don't think, believe that. In September of 2015, the Romanian president traveled to the White House where he spoke to Joe Biden specifically on, quote, anti-corruption efforts and rule of law as a means to strengthen national security and promote greater investment and economic growth. Well, yeah, economic growth, but I mean, not for the little people. You see, Hunter Biden got a brand new client. Yeah, uh, his new client was uh, this guy. Love this Romanian businessman. OK, he contacted Hunter Biden after being charged with, you'll never guess, yeah. corruption. Corruption. It's crazy, crazy. So he had the money and then he had the pass through corporation here and then they gave it to an attorney. I mean, it makes total sense, right? I mean, if you are a low level, I don't know, crack dealer, um, you want somebody to, you know, take care of you because you crashed your car. Everyone knows you better call Saul. Everyone knows if you're facing multiple years in federal prison for corruption and Joe Biden is chummy with the president, everyone knows better call Hunter. Within five weeks of Joe Biden's meeting in the White House, the payments began flowing from the Romanian businessman through his company based in Cyprus. Yeah, the one on the board because that's where all legitimate businesses are based, in Cyprus. And guess who they went to? Yeah, to Joe Biden's family. Now let's see if the process is familiar at all. The Romanian company, Bladen Enterprises, began wiring $3 million to a familiar name, Robinson Walker, the same exact pass-through that we had before. Well, look, it's exactly the same so far. And like with China, Walker then sent a third of that money to James Galar. What does he do? Multiple other payments were then sent to Hunter and James and Hallie 
And the grandkids, well, the grandkids are doing a lot in Romania. Don't make fun of them. Those grandkids are all over that issue in Romania. Then the mysterious Biden again. And then the Biden family LLCs. Hmm. It's not normal. I don't think this is the way business is legitimately conducted. And it's a pattern. Also makes this text message, unlike Pop, I won't make you give half your salary, look a little more suspicious, doesn't it? The Biden family would go on to receive a million dollars more this way, the, the same way to the letter that it was done with the Chinese. Now, can I ask you a question? Do you have a lot of friends who have a maze of shady LLCs or a bunch of LLCs and they don't do anything with them? And do those LLCs receive money from foreign shell companies out of, well, one of the biggest money laundering areas is Cyprus? How many friends do you have that have a problem child, a crackhead family member, then do all of the business and have them, you, they've got a real problem, have them work on the deals and the money and then funnel it through multiple hard to trace intermediaries that go down to the brothers and the wives and the grandkids because I've never heard of that. If I heard anything like this from somebody that I considered a friend, I, I wouldn't be friends with them anymore. I would be asking a lot of questions. What, what, what exactly it, it is you do? I wouldn't want to get caught anywhere close to them because there's only one reason people do business like this, and it is crime, corruption. Now, all of this is coming out as a whistleblower has come forward, claiming the FBI possesses the information that alleges then Joe Biden, the vice president, was involved in a criminal scheme with a foreign national relating to the exchange of money for policy decisions. Wow, there's a Pulitzer waiting for somebody. Where is the curiosity? Where is the honesty? I think the press is in way too deep. How can they seriously defend the fact that everywhere Joe goes to talk about corruption, his son is there side by side with him connected to corruption in the same place? And then the entire family magically makes millions of dollars. It is absurd. Now, maybe a more important question, where is the action? Where is the Justice Department? Where is Congress? I applaud this disclosure. Now, what will Congress do about it? They must defund the Justice Department and FBI. They, it must happen. Now, there is uh, something else that is interesting. You remember how the left works? Donald Trump's house was raided by the FBI. Joe did the same thing he was accused of. Where was the raid? Hillary Clinton did the same thing Trump is accused of with, uh, with campaign finance violations. She paid a small fine, but the left weaponized a radical district attorney to haul Trump into court. Can I tell you something? We suck at this. We suck. We just expect things to go well and people be honest, and then they're not honest, and we're like, oh, gee, that, well, that, wow, that hurt. Check this out from a recent House Oversight Disclosure. Quote, the committee has uncovered evidence indicative of influence peddling and financial deception warranting further investigation and legislative solutions. Influence peddling and financial deception. And all we're hearing about is potential legislative solutions? I mean, I'm all in for writing laws that ensure another Biden crime family is never allowed to engage in this kind of behavior. But uh, who's going to do something right now about this problem? Where is the anti Alvin Bragg? Someone that instead of using the justice system to uh, persecute rivals will instead just uphold the rule of law.
Where is John Adams, a guy who actually defended the British soldiers after the Boston Massacre? That didn't make him popular, but he did it because we're either a nation of law and order or we are not a nation at all. So let's change this, shall we, beginning tonight. Is Hunter Biden protected in the same way as children of Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro? His list of alleged crimes is worse than you think, but you can do something about it. Let's go there. Okay, the Durham report finally dropped um, on Monday afternoon. And it's everything you would expect from this government. It admits the FBI acted without any evidence. It concedes this is not the way it was supposed to be done. It describes a weaponized arm of the government that set out to persecute a private American citizen. It involved the director of the CIA, the FBI, the Obama administration, the Clinton campaign, and the mainstream media. It is 306 pages, and it was the culmination of everything we expected from the Russian hoax. It was a sham. It was a psyop. And despite multiple levels of government, Hillary Clinton and the media, look at what, the Durham, what Durham suggested as the solution. Possible FBI reform. That's it? That's, that's no conspiracy charges and nothing? Really? Well, why would we expect anything different from Durham? A, he's part of the system. If I give him the benefit of the doubt, what is he going to do about it? He says we have to change the hearts and minds of those who are in service and put them back in service to protect and defend the Constitution because they're not doing it now. It's the same road that we're on that I talked about earlier. There are entities in this country that are too big to fail. There are people who are just too big to jail. And if we want results, we have to lead the way. So let me ask you a question. Is Joe Biden's family better than your family? Would your son or daughter go to jail from criminal activity? Uh, or would they not just because of who they are? If they wouldn't go to jail for criminal activity just for the sole act of being born to the right people or right family, we have a real problem, now don't we? If you ask Vladimir Putin, he would say, yeah, no, my children are better and above the law. Ask Xi Jinping, Nicolas Maduro. They'd say exactly the same thing. I point this out because it goes to the core of institutional rot in every authoritarian country that has ever existed. When law and order means nothing, when you have two classes of people, when a political class rises above the people they claim to represent, and when the federal government weaponizes against their foes for persecution, when they shield those they deem protected, You've lost your country, and you become China, Russia, Cuba, Venezuela. Name them. This is why we must hold Hunter Biden accountable and start with him. He is not above the law, and the families of politicians are not better than ours. I'm going to show you how to hold Hunter accountable and give you the tools to do it. But you've got to start right now. All of this information is available, again, in our Biden crime, uh, Biden crime family dossier. You can access it by going to thereckoningguide.com. If you pull that up, you will see the Biden family alleged crimes that are primarily at the just, uh, Department of Justice level. They are all there, and they are fully sourced. Now, I'm not going to focus on those. We saw how different the government treated Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump over basically the same crime. We've just witnessed how weak the response is from the Durham report. Do we really think the DOJ is going to do anything about any of these Biden family allegations? I'm not holding my breath. But these federal level crimes, again, are part of the government and media's misdirection. They would love us to zoom in and just look at that picture. 
Those are the cases they control. They can drag them and sweep it all under the rug. But what happens if you zoom out? The Marco Polo project on Hunter Biden's laptop notes over 170 crimes, 170 crimes, clearly documented. We know the place and the date and everything. And they're spread out all over the country in states that perhaps you're living in right now. So let me go over some of these crimes. This is the list and the states where some of these crimes happen. It is staggering. I haven't heard of nearly any of these. If, if the president's son is implicated in 170 crimes, why hasn't justice been done? I mean, it seems kind of relevant to the public, doesn't it? What the heck's going on here? Really? 170? I'm gonna go through some of these, but you should follow along in our dossier. So let's go over the crimes state by state. I'm gonna start in Arizona. By the way, this is a crack pipe. On October 27th, 2016, Hunter Biden, under the influence of crack, crashed his car on the way to rehab, then dropped off his second car at the rental facility near the airport. He uh, accidentally left several items in the vehicle, including personal IDs, a crack pipe, and a baggie with cocaine. Now get this, before the lab test even came in, proving that it was cocaine, both the city and county attorney said, we're not gonna prosecute. Why? Would your family, would your family member ever get the same courtesy? Would you want the same courtesy? Hunter would later admit that, well, I had to write it in my book. It's chapter eight, my book, Beautiful Things. So we have an official record. We have proof and a confession. What we don't have is justice. Ha! So what's up, Arizona? Is there anybody in Arizona that might be willing to say, you know, I'd like to take that crime on? If you live in Con Connecticut, it's going to get very busy in Connecticut. So many crimes here. I'm starting to wonder if there is actually a functioning justice system at all in Connecticut. I'll start with the drug crimes. February 20, uh, 2019, a female who is herself currently in jail for other crimes arranged a meeting with Hunter to bring him crack cocaine. Well, that's fantastic. Who doesn't like a little crack cocaine? Later in February 2019, texts show that Hunter was conversing with his drug dealer, showing he was uh, consuming drugs and trafficking them as well. Hunter was pissed off that he was sold some drugs that were low quality. Who <laughs> hasn't been there? Hunter's laptop clearly shows money transfers of over $1,400 and $1,500. March 2019, Hunter texts uh, show that he ordered $400 worth of crack. I mean, at least the guy is good at keeping records. On that same day, Hunter's texts show him offering drugs to a female, then setting up sex and a drug romp with another woman. Have you heard of any of these? I mean, have you heard about the Connecticut sex crimes? Because of sex crimes, wow. February 2019, Hunter solicits a woman for sex. Later the same night, after the woman leaves his room, Hunter solicits two more prostitutes through an online escort service. The energy he has is actually quite impressive. The very next day, Hunter solicits a third prostitute. This particular lady of the evening instructs Hunter how to weed out the police. Later that day, Hunter solicits another prostitute at a casino, and then another one an hour later. Sky is remarkable then another who agrees to meet him at the best western hotel i mean how comes to mind uh february 13th soliciting february 14th hunter takes a video of him having sex with a prostitute and smoking crack money transfers show he paid the woman fifteen hundred dollars february 17th soliciting uber rec uh, records show hunter paid for their rides 
to come and meet him. Also later on the 17, soliciting again. Uber records and a link to a Visa debit card to pay the prostitutes are described on the laptop. February 26, guess. Yeah, soliciting. This is just Connecticut. Is there anyone in Connecticut that would like to maybe prosecute for a crime? Moving on to Delaware. Whew, Delaware, we could be here all night. June 2018, Hallie uh, Biden pressures uh, Hunter to procure crack cocaine for her. Oh, just like they're in business together. Well, they're sleeping together and doing crack cocaine. What a beautiful family. This was all caught on recorded phone calls. Uh, 2018, October, Hunter does a drug deal that ends at a 7-Eleven convenience store. Later in October, Hunter texts Hallie Biden that he's currently, quote, smoking crack on 4th and Rodney. That's great. December 2018, video evidence of Hunter naked smoking crack at a public spa. Later in December, a text message admitting to an unfair drug deal. March 2019, Hunter buys drugs from a registered sex offender. October 12th, 2018, Hunter buys a gun. Uh, it was, it, it, well, he shouldn't have, because, well, he had to lie a little bit on the application about his drug use, okay? October 23rd, 2018, Halle throws Hunter's gun in the trash can at a grocery store. We need more gun laws. No arrests were made. And what's this? What's, you know, this list is not good for anything unless you had a few sex crimes in here. December 2018, photo evidence of a night with a prostitute and crack cocaine. January 2019, video evidence of prostitutes and crack cocaine. February, more video evidence of the same prostitute and the same drugs. Well, I mean, new drugs because he had already smoked the other. If you live in Delaware, you've got your work cut out for you. I know. Uh, probably not going to happen in Delaware. But how about Florida? Wow, Florida is an interesting case here. Because Florida, you'd think there'd be somebody that was a prosecutor. They're like, you know what? I think we should prosecute for the 2016 March. Photos show Joe Biden's son-in-law, medical doctor, uh, Howard Crean, smoking a joint Violation of medical license regulations. December 2018. By the way, you might think that that's little, a little thing. Do you think if you were a doctor and you did this and it was on tape and they found out that they wouldn't come after you? December 2018. Hunter Biden sends money to a Ukrainian escort and pimp. The transfer was flagged by J.P. Morgan as possible human trafficking. By the way, um, these flags that the banks do, th this is when they think there's money laundering or a crime being committed. Um, they only issued 170 of these that we know of. 170 times the banks sent out an alert saying, we think something's wrong here. A hundred and seventy times. Let's go to Massachusetts. November 2018, Hunter attempts to buy more crack. December 2018, Hunter sets up a drug deal and exchanges $1,200 for, I'm sure, a Beanie Baby collection. January 2019, another drug deal with a payment via PayPal. February 2019, video evidence of Hunter smoking crack at the Marriott Hotel and sex crimes. December 2018, video evidence and text messages prove Hunter solicited two prostitutes and did drugs with them at his uh, property owned by his psychiatrist. By the way, where's hashtag me too? Also in December, Hunter solicits another prostitute. She requests $1,000 as payment through Venmo. January 2019, Hunter solicits another prostitute. You know, he could hide all of these if he would use Bitcoin because I hear the president says that's where the real crime happens. Video evidence was found on her OnlyFans account. 
You now have February 2019. Hunter attempts to solicit a prostitute, but doesn't get a response. <sighs> Nevada. August 2018, Hunter conducts a drug deal and pays the dealer $250. Also, August 2018, Hunter solicits a prostitute. August 7th, Hunter solicits another prostitute. Tennessee, October 2016, according to his own admission written about in his memoir, Hunter Biden purchases crack cocaine in Nashville and drives under the influence. In Texas, December 2018, Hunter solicited a Texas woman for sex and paid her flight to the East Coast. She requested $1,000 in payment. In Virginia, June 8, uh, 2018, Hunter takes pictures of himself driving around in Arlington, Virginia, smoking crack. Now, I don't know about you, but where I come from, that's against the law. Now, these are the crimes that we, we know about and have clear-cut evidence, like open and shut case here. I don't know how many more there are, but let me ask you, out of all of these, nobody, nobody prosecutes this. There's not one prosecutor out anywhere in the country that saw that crime come through and went, yeah, I, I don't care who he is. It's weird. They see the Biden name and immediately stop pursuing the case. We actually left off the crimes in places like New York and California because the institutional rot is so bad in those states, there's no way anything will ever be done. Do you think Alvin Bragg would prosecute Hunter Biden in Manhattan? Would Gavin Newsom allow anything like that to be done in California? Some of these states are just lost. But we can push action on every single one of these crimes on the chalkboard. Blaze TV has already begun the legwork contacting every single one of the prosecutors and attorney generals with the powers to prosecute these crimes. But here's where we need your help. They're not going to do it because we call. They're only going to do it when they are shamed into it. There are two things you can do tonight to bring about the reckoning the Bidens deserve. First, we wouldn't have been able to do any of this without your support of subscribers. Thank you. The fight is going to get tougher. We need to be able to um, be in touch with you. Have your email address. Uh, know how to contact you. We would like to ask you to consider joining us by becoming a Blaze TV subscriber. Give us the resources we need to continue this fight. You can go to blazetv.com slash reckoning and join today. Use the promo code reckoning at checkout and you'll save $30 off your subscription. Now, second, I think people don't care about the crimes that are happening in Washington anymore because they think Nothing's going to happen anyway, so who cares? And you tune out. That is exactly how we lose our country. They have convinced you that there's nothing you can do. They have convinced you that you need to sit down and shut up. So I'd like you to do the opposite. I'd like you to flood the phone lines and email inboxes of every single prosecutor or attorney general that has the power to prosecute these crimes. The only way these officials will take action if the pressure in their own local community becomes so great they can no longer ignore us. You can find the information to contact these officials by receiving our Biden crime family dossier at thereckoningguide.com. Call them beginning tonight, tomorrow. Flood the email box, tell all your friends, Facebook post, all of it. Then after you've done that, do it again. Send them another email and another and another after that and keep going until you are heard. If they give you an unsatisfactory answer, keep at it. The left never gives up, never. 
And we're like, oh, it's the greatest country ever, you know, freedom. It's been great. Our children will be doomed to slavery and debt for the rest of all generations of time. <sighs> well, that didn't work when we tried the election. Why would we give up? Now, let me give you what you're going to see, okay? I have examples of what we did get back. See all those crimes in Connecticut? Yeah, that's not going to happen in Connecticut. Well, I don't want to say that, because maybe. But here's a response we got back from the Connecticut Office of the Attorney General. And I quote, In Connecticut, the Office of the Attorney General does not have criminal jurisdiction. You may wish to direct your inquiry to criminal authorities. Oh, okay, all right. All those crimes committed in their state, and they don't have the jurisdiction. Huh. Maybe they should call one of the local prosecutors. But you know what? Uh, you can call the local prosecutors. Yeah, you can call and, and demand that action be taken. Are you a state of laws or not? Did the lack of jurisdiction stop Alvin Bragg? If the alleged criminal's name was Don Jr. rather than Hunter Biden, would that be the response? In Virginia, as I showed you earlier, there is photographic evidence of Hunter Biden driving his car under the influence of crack cocaine. Pictures you might think might make for a pretty slam dunk case there in Virginia. Here's the response we got from the attorney general's office in Virginia. Thank you for reaching out. Unfortunately, this doesn't work for the attorney general's schedule, so we'll have to decline. Have they changed the law? I know Virginia uh, is changing the law to follow a lot of California laws uh, lately. Uh, they, is it it's still legal to smoke crack and drive, right? I'm just, I'm just checking. I don't know if there's mothers against, uh, you know, crack driving. I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe we need them. Is it, it is still illegal to break the law, I think. I don't know. I'm just asking a question. The job of the justice system in these states is to uh, prosecute crime, right? If the answer is yes, then why is no one willing to do their jobs here? Let me just go to the base level. I mean, there's nobody that wants to be an absolute home run hero for taking this up. Why do you think Alvin Bragg did it? Because he wants to be, I don't know, some big wig and... I don't know, Soros' hot tub party. Ooh. Ooh, excuse me. He's doing it so he can become the guy. Is there not one prosecutor who sees injustice happening in their state with the power to do something that just doesn't, you know, I, yeah, sure, the Constitution, blah, 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 but I could be famous. Some things are too big to fail, I guess. Some people are just too big to jail. Is that the country you want to live in? Because now is the time you make that decision. Is this road the one you think we should be traveling? It's the same road traveled by countries like Russia, China, Venezuela. Justice must be blind. Every day I get up and I say my prayers and I ask and my staff before our producers meeting, we do the same thing. Michaela prayed today for you and for us to know what do we need to say? What, what should we say? What, please steer us away from the things that are not important and to the things. We need his help. We need your help, but you need his help and our help. We're in this together. If you want a country that listens to laws and is a nation of laws and not men, so my child gets the same treatment as his child does, then we need to re-gouge the eyes of Lady Liberty. We need a hitter with a stick in the eye. With your participation, we can ensure that these emails are not ignored. If there's just one prosecutor that is forced to do their job, if these crimes occurred in the state in which you live, reach out to them. 
Do it now. Do it early. Do it often. Again, the website for all of the cases and the contact information is at thereckoningguide.com. You are not powerless. And it is time to turn the tables on the left and engage lawfare. Not the game, the law like, uh, not to game the law like the left always does, but to ensure the law actually means something. How do we build on tonight? How do we take this to the next level? How do you take it to the next level? How can you build momentum with state attorney generals, district attorneys, and prosecutors? We've talked to a lot of people, and they all say the same thing. Yes, this could work if. The if is answered by you. Maybe some of the other questions can be answered by, by Mark Levin. He has a few strong opinions on this. We, uh, we go to Mark Levin now. Joining me now is somebody that has been right in the thick of exposing Russiagate since day one. He has seen what the Bidens have been getting away with for years. He is also an attorney. If anyone can give actionable advice, it's Blaze TV's own The Great One, Mark Levin. Mark, welcome to the uh, welcome to the program. I, I I saw something on MSNBC and I wanted to get your comment on it. Um, watch this clip and listen carefully to what he says. This week, after four months of endless investigations, weeks upon weeks of conspiracy-addled Fox cameos, and countless promises of seismic revelations of a Soprano-esque Biden family criminal enterprise, James Comer and his Republican allies on the House Oversight Committee held a press conference, press conference excuse me, to announce, wait for it, drum roll please, Nothing, nada, zilch, no evidence connecting President Biden to any wrongdoing whatsoever. All of that work and innuendo to produce a 65-page memo showing no specific allegations okay, of a crime. Um, Mark, is this a case of uh, the letter of the law versus the uh, spirit of the law, that they did everything absolutely legal it's just incredibly unethical and against everything we stand for. First of all, this guy, whomever he is, is a propagandist. And let me help him out here a little bit, even though I think he's beyond uh, redemption, which is this. When your family members receive multi-millions of dollars from the communist Chinese, a front group that is spread to nine family members through 20 shell corporations, when your father is vice president of the United States, and he's given as the point man to deal with the communist Chinese and other countries that have loaded up the Biden bank accounts with money, uh, that is worth a special counsel under the existing special counsel regulation, period. That's number one. Number two, this money didn't flow into the Biden family, nine members and three grandchildren. <laughs> because of their uh, competence in anything or their knowledge about anything. They bought this family off. And so when you have a fool like this guy on MSNBC, and there's many of them in the phony media, they are telling you that this effort to conceal the purpose of the money has succeeded because you can't prove that these companies Correct. were set up and the money didn't go to Biden. So the Biden crime family sent, sets up these methods for concealing the money and concealing where the money goes. And these people say, because they're really Democrats, and these people say, and you can't prove otherwise. It's really an amazing thing. First of all, Congress is not a criminal investigatory operation. We know well, that. And that's the, yeah. that's the problem, isn't it, uh, Mark? Because we've seen, if you bring anything up, it goes to D.C. court. There's not a chance you're going to get a fair trial in D.C. if you're a conservative. Um, and no Democrat's ever going to have a bad outcome in D.C. But you also, Congress can do whatever they want, but they have to recommend 
uh, prosecution and, and investigation and furthering of something to the Justice Department. The Justice Department can say, no, we're not doing it. So that's what we're trying to get to here is the constant, there's got to be a way that we're not gaming the system. We are using the system to apply uh, pressure to make sure these people go to jail or at least see the inside of a courtroom. Well, it's complicated, but there are two things Congress can do. Number one, slash the budget of the FBI Correct. and the Department of Justice. I mean, slash it big time, break it up, uh, redistribute its power, take some power away from it, because I can tell you now, if the framers today woke up and looked at this FBI, they'd say, what the hell have you done to yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't give this entity any authority. We didn't even create this entity, let alone the Department of Justice. And this FBI, whether it's uh, the dorm situation or what it's doing to Trump now or what it's doing to parents or Catholics or anything else, it is the American Stasi. So the Republicans should just keep pressing the case to slash the budget. I was contacted by former Congressman Bob Walker, who you may want to have on one day. And uh, he worked with Newt Gingrich years mm -hmm. ago from Pennsylvania. And he said there's a way for one member of the House of Representatives to go to the floor of the House and to force cutting in specific areas of the budget as long as he has the support of the chairman of the Rules Committee. And I honestly believe Kevin McCarthy, who's one of the finest speakers we've ever had, that's what he's turning out to be. I hope you're would right. Would absolutely support that effort. That's number one. Number two, they ought to drag these guys before these committees left and right and just work them over. I mean, harass them, get their documents, do whatever they have to do, make everything public to we, the American people, not for the New York Times or fools like MSNBC, but for the rest of the American people. We have in the Oval Office today a Manchurian president. Mm -hmm. And I would also add to the local DAs out there and the state attorneys general, what are you sitting around about? You ought to be looking at every law you have, like the Democrats do in Manhattan and Atlanta and everywhere else, and you ought to see if there's any wire fraud issues related to you, any bank issues related to your state. You should demand to look into all these shell corporations, all these businesses. What is it? The moron who's the attorney general of New York, the radical leftist can do this, but we don't have an attorney general anywhere in the United States hey, who can do the same thing to them. We're getting, we, we've already sent things out, but they haven't felt the force of the audience yet. Um, in Connecticut, the office of the attorney general does not have criminal jurisdiction. You may wish to direct your inquirer, inquiry to criminal uh, authorities. Uh, this one is, um, thank you for reaching out. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't work for the attorney general's schedule, so we'll have to decline. Uh, they're giving us the runaround saying that they can't do it. Even the attorney general of the state of Texas is saying, I just, it's, I can't, I, well, wait a minute. Why can't you? And if it's not the attorney general, then there's got to be a, a DA or a local prosecutor that will take these charges up. You have 70 charges just on uh, Hunter Biden alone that are provable. 70. Well, I would ask this. Is prostitution legal in uh, every state in the country? I don't think so. How about drug use? Is that legal in every state of the country? He's caught on film on his own laptop. I'm talking about Hunter Biden. I mean, they're digging into nothing to get Trump in Manhattan. These guys got to wake the hell up. I mean, if I really wanted to get one of these uh, Bidens, I probably could figure out something. Look, some state attorneys general are stronger than others in terms of their statutory and constitutional authority. But I can't believe there's one DA, Republican, one state attorney general, Republican, who doesn't have the authority to dig into this stuff and should, because the only way you're going to stop this tyranny is if you use it on them. Otherwise, it will not stop. And we have the, the here's the problem. We've got these these Marxists in the Democrat Party. They are driven. They are revolutionaries. They'll take out presidents. They'll take out the Catholic. They don't care. And then we have Republicans who are perfectly happy with sitting back and whining and complaining. If you're a district attorney and an attorney general and you're a Republican and you have authority, 
Well, by God, we expect you to dust off every statute and ordinance you have and take a look. And if there's nothing there, at least tell us there's nothing there. But if there's something there, pull the prosecutorial trigger. That's what you need to do. And these people need to be afraid of our Republican prosecutors, the way that Republicans are becoming afraid. And people will say, well, Mark, now we're acting like them. No, we're trying to save our country, just like a military battle without bullets. We're trying to save our country. And we've got to send in our forces. We've got to send in whomever we need to send in to start doing serious battle. But I, I, words, I honestly yeah. see this as... Uh, we're we're not we're not even out of bullets. We've never put a bullet in a gun. Right. We we these are laws that are being broken. The people that are are paid to prosecute when people break those laws are doing nothing in their states. It is time that I mean I got to tell you, Mark. Would I know I would? Would you not make that? DA or that attorney general, the most famous attorney general in America, if he was doing this? Or how about just caring about your country? Yeah, I know. How about, how about you're there and you're watching this and you're saying to yourself, my God, I've spent my career as a law enforcement official. I got elected campaigning on law and order. Uh, I can't sit here and watch my country die like this with these phony prosecutors in Manhattan and Atlanta and uh, Jack the Ripper Smith out there as the special counsel, I can't put up with this. And so that is what they ought to look at. And they ought to, some of these guys ought to even be objecting to what this phony special prosecutor is doing in their own states with their mm -hmm. state legislatures. Mm -hmm. But, I, I, you know, um, I think if we put the pressure on, we might have a shot at this. Uh, but the idea that there is not even an ongoing investigation of Biden and of course, the big problem, as you know, Glenn, and we can't fix it, is the propagandist that you played from MSNBC. Oh, look, there was nothing here. There's everything there. And if you're a reporter, forget about prosecutors for a minute. If you're a reporter, you were just handed, you know, a massive Pulitzer fingerprints, Prize. DNA, and yeah. all kinds of stuff to follow. And you're there. Not, nah, not. Nah, that's not it. Um, I urge you to go to the reckoningguide.com, get all of the information that you would need and call your local prosecutors, your state attorney generals, uh, or anyone else that actually has some authority to look at the crimes and begin to use the law the way it was intended to stop bad guys. Mark, thank you. God bless you, my friend. So I want to thank um, Mark for being on and, again, reiterate something he just said. The, the propaganda of legacy media companies like MSNBC is a major problem. You know, I bet you there's half the country that doesn't even know these crimes exist because the media is not telling them. And what they are telling them is th that there was nothing going on. That's why I'm so grateful to you, honestly. You give us the resources to get to the truth and you actually respond um, and you're listening and you care as much as we do or we care as much as you do. In just a minute, I'm going to be ending this live stream on Facebook and YouTube. If we're still on, I'll be answering questions from our Blaze TV subscribers. If you'd like to join that uh, conversation, head over now to blazetv.com slash reckoning. You can subscribe if you haven't already. Um, it is really important to have you in this fight. We're offering the biggest discount we've ever done, $30 off uh, your yearly subscription with the code RECKONING at checkout. Thank you for joining us tonight, but more importantly, thank you for not giving up on this country. We cannot throw our hands up and go, well, nothing's going to happen. As long as people like you are willing to make a stand, there is hope for our republic. Do not give up. Ever, ever, ever. Do not abandon the fight. Let's roll up our sleeves and get into the fight. Thank you. God bless America.